know that. Hear me now? Ooh, cool. Too loud. Hang on. Man, I'm rusty at this. Okay, so where was I going? Stickers and memes. So we have this chat going on, you know, the stuff with the channels within the community. So maybe to, that would be more fun. We might want to allow all of that. But within our org, we might want things to be a little more serious and not have that in some of our teams or maybe even a client team or something like that. So one of the things I've been recommending is disabling that feature where you need it disabled and then deploying this custom stickers app template so you can control what images or GIFs and different things that you want to allow you, you know, people within your org within that team to use. And so there's a solution here called custom stickers. So there's this custom sticker app template, and if you go to the architecture, so you'll have the GitHub repo. From there, you can click on to see what the architecture is. So you see here, I can see what this architecture is built off, and this is a messaging extension. Let's see if we can zoom in here. So you see what this is going to be is I'll end up deploying it, and I did deploy it to my Azure tenant. So there are instructions to deploy this. And so this does require um, some, you've got to be, I forgot what the, um, the Permissions have to be on Azure now because I know they changed it. Sometimes I think now if you have to grant global admin consent, it has to be someone that is a subscription administrator, but we won't go down that rabbit hole. But bottom line is, if I didn't have access to my Azure portal to create resource groups and stuff, I wouldn't be able to deploy this. So this is something you will have to have specific permissions to do. Or like I mentioned, set up a, you know, have another tenant that you would want to use to demo. So I followed all the instructions to deploy this and what this custom sticker architecture consists of, it's going to have a couple different things. It's going to be a messaging extension. It's also going to be an Azure. Let's go back to the actual architecture slide real quick. Okay. So there's going to be a couple of things. Um, it's going to be a messaging extension, but I also have to have a place to store these images and manage the uh, images. So I have to have a configuration web application. So this is one of the things that gets provisioned in Azure. And so let's go back to my slide. So here we go. So you'll, it's a messaging extension, which is an Azure function. And that's what those are. And it, that Azure function is going to return these images into my messaging extension. Then there's the configuration app. And that's for the configuration of what you want to allow with the stickers. So here you'll see this is my, my website that was created in Azure. So I can manage this messaging extension. And in here you'll see I'll be able to upload images and change things. So this is part of that configuration. And I'm totally out of shape and out of breath. OK, here we go. <laughs> so what I have here, there's going to be a couple of different things that get created. Um, let's go to the website. Where did it go? Here we go. So this is my configuration website. Let me go back to Azure. I have a resource group called, I think it's this one. I'm going to clean up my demos here. So I have a resource group here that was created, and I just called it Stickers Resource. And on here, you're going to see I have a couple different things, a storage account, a web app bot, um, a function app, because I have to have, you know, it's Azure Logic app that's being used, and then the app service. And so what will happen is I will, you will have a website and on this, here's my website for my configuration app, which is just Ignite. I initially did this demo at Ignite back in 2019 when we were in person. Um, but that you'll see, uh, this is the URL that I have configured for this configuration app. And on here is where I can control my images. So let's go into Teams. Let's do a new conversation. I'm going to click on here to go to the More app. I didn't do any configuration to have it show up anywhere special. So what happens here, and since I haven't used it in a while, it's not in my recent. So I go to more app here, and here's the stickers. Now, this is what I called it for this demo. You can call it anything that you want, and you can use any image that you want on this. And so what I'll do is I'll click on stickers. And then what it's doing now, and it's figures it's going to be slow while I'm demoing. Normally, it's fast. But what it's doing is it's retrieving the images 
It's really normally instant, but you know it's Murphy's Law. I'm demoing right now. Oh, look at that. Let me update the messaging extension again. Try again. There we go. So now you see it's returning the stickers that are set in that are configured for this messaging extension. So you see I have four, and I can add more and you know take away more. And so let me go ahead and remove one. I'll go back into the configuration app. I'll go ahead and remove Sharon Summer. Sorry, Sharon, you're going to go. So I'm going to delete Sharon. And I'm deleting this, but what will happen right now is if anybody goes in to create a new message with that messaging extension, that image is still going to show up. Because what I haven't done is I haven't updated this messaging extension. So I just have to click Update. So it's going to update the messaging extension. And then when I go back in here to use this stickers app again, now you'll see that that image I deleted is gone. Now, this is very basic. I haven't deployed it, the latest one recently. I, I got to see if it's changed or not. So one of the things I know um, most of you are not developers, but you can have your developers within your org do this if you want. They can take the code for this and expand on it and take it further. So like, for example, on this, I don't have category. Maybe I want to have categories or different things. So the purpose of these is that it gives you a starting point. You can use them 100% as they came out of the box. I don't know if I want to use that term. But you can, or you can customize it to fit your needs. So that's one use case example. And like I mentioned, okay, so I have the stickers, but what I, you know, what I might do, which I turned it on, I'll go back into the team and decide for this one, I'm not going to allow st stickers and memes and giphies. And so what it is, I go back here. Um, I will be able to use the stickers app, but you'll look down in the messaging extension bar here, the Giphy's and memes icons are gone. Okay? So that's how you can control that. So that's one of the use cases that I really like. Um, okay. So the way this one is now, no, but you can do that. You just have to give them permissions to the configuration app. Yeah, you can do that. That's a good question. Okay. Let me go back into here. So that's one use case. Another use case is, have any of you heard of request a team? Do you use it? This is the one I'm going to talk about. This is the one I'm going to demo. Um, well, to a point, my, my logic app is not working right now. Yay? Okay, good. Good. Yep. Yes, there is some limitation. All right, so going in this, uh, one, this use case, there's a request to team app. This is built off the Power Platform. It uses a Power App, SharePoint as the back end for the data for this approval process. It uses um, a flow in Power Automate to do the approval process. And then it has a Logic App in Azure to auto-provision the team, any team that's been approved. So I'll walk through this. Um, now, this is a great use case because this is a very, very common ask within organizations. How can we control users creating teams. Many organizations completely lock it down, right? So then you have to go through this process internally. And, to, and a lot of people don't have something built in, so they're contacting IT. Hey, I need a team. Then you have to go through you know, maybe a bunch of emails to get that approved. So what this allows you to do is to create a provisioning process in teams so that your users can go in and request to have a team created, and it won't get created unless it gets approved. So it's got the base structure on here for you to go through this process. And this is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you out of the box, and then I'll show you what we're using at Core BPS. Um, what I like about this is that it gives you a wizard approach. So um, here's just an example. Actually, I'll dive into the demo. So I'll just these are slides for your reference. Um, but let me just talk about the architecture real quick, and then I'll show you the demo. So you're going to have a Power App that um, Surface and Teams is a Teams tab. You'll have a home page on it, my request, and then approve request. 
You're going to have a flow that's going to basically go through the approval process, which is going to send an adaptive card into Teams, which I'll dive into that. You're going to have a logic app. And some people have asked, why a logic app? When you want to auto-provision a team, there's certain things. There's some actions within Power Automate that you can do to create teams and channels, but it's very limited right now. So logic app gives you a lot more functionality of what you can do. So what we do is, it, it'll walk you, there's this whole setup on it in the instructions, but you'll end up using a service account for that to run the Logic app. Okay, then there's different connectors. So one of the things, I'm a big proponent of using SharePoint a lot as my backend data source, and one of the reasons why too is it keeps you within your current licensing if, if you're not on premium. I'm not a Dataverse pusher, no offense to my friends at Microsoft, love you guys, but I'm not that type of person. I'm always looking at what is the best fit for your organization at this time. And for something like this, works perfectly fine using SharePoint. Now, if you didn't want to use SharePoint, you could change the solution to use a different data source. That's up to you. But you have the structure in to be able to build off of that. Um, and then you're going to have different users. You'll have your app owners and then the app members um, with that. So on the architecture, let's just go back into the setup first. So if I wanted to deploy a request to team, when I did this, first thing I did was go to this GitHub repo, and on there, that's where you're going to see all these different, um, oh, they added more stuff, sensitivity labels. Oh, see, they, I've been a little behind on this documentation. My apologies. Should have been more up to date. But they're, 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 Microsoft is improving this more and more, so this is great. Um, and give your feedback, because the, the, the team wants to hear your feedback on improvements or even use cases that you want to look you know, them to create a solution for. But you'll have the documentation and there's a deployment guide. And this is exactly what I walked through. So I walked through the deployment guide. It's going to tell you um, there's deployment scripts. I went through and I ran everything. If you run into issues, raise an issue on GitHub, on the repo. That's what they're monitoring. Um, and so, but I went through all the instructions to do this. And these are all the instructions for you to just go ahead and install it as is. Right? Or, um, and so that's what I set up. Completely set it up as is. And let me go back to Azure. I gotta clean up my, I gotta clean up my repos here. Okay, so here we go. So a couple things that get created. Let's go to the SharePoint site. So, well, let me also go to Power App. Give me a second. Um, I thought I had that open, so my apologies. So you'll have a Power App that you deploy. You're going to have a flow that you deploy. So if I look here, I should have, is this my demo tenant? OK. I'm in alphabetical order. I am blind today. Here we go. Here's Request a Team. So you'll have a Power App. And you can modify this Power App. We did at Core, where we put our logo in. But you have a Power App. And, and like I said, you can deploy it exactly as is which is what I did in my demo, didn't modify it. But I wanted to make you guys aware that you can modify this. So you're going to have a Power App. You'll also have a Flow. Let's go into Power Automate. So then there's two flows that are going to happen. One of them is going to be check team availability. Another one is going to be team request approval. And the reason, uh, let, me, let me just go into the app first and then we'll dive into the architecture more. So I've got this request a team app here. Actually, let's do it on the side. I've got it on the sidebar as well. So the request a, a team app, I have it deployed in this tenant. Um, what I'm opening now is, uh, I've got two things. I have it embedded as a tab in Teams for one of my channels. Um, and then I also have it set up where I have it pinned as an app on the sidebar in Teams so that the users can go and click on it and open it. So what you're going to see here, you have two options here. I can create a team from scratch or I can use a template. If I were to use from template and click create, what's going to happen is there's going to be a drop down of template choices. Now what this is coming from is a SharePoint list. So what gets created on the back end is you're going to have a couple of different lists. 
you're going to have three legs, team request settings, team request, and team template. The team request settings is going to be the initial configuration that you have to do during deployment and that has it all in the instructions. Like one of them, I had to update my tenant URL. I also had to, um, I created a, you had to create a team for the approval process. So it's like request a team admin. So on there, I had to give it the team's ID and channel ID is where I'm going to be posting these adapted cards to during, for the approval process. So those are all the things that are configured there. So that's your initial setup. Then the second part I have is the team template. So in here, you'll have a list that gets deployed that's going to have these templates in here. You can modify this. Or maybe you have your own templates that you've created. Right? But this is what you can control. And so this is what is feeding in this list. And for my team, maybe education is not something I want. We don't need it. So I might remove those. Or what the other thing I can do is update the SharePoint list and then update the Power App. So maybe I want to have different groups. So that's if you wanted to expand on it. You could do that. It's not built in it, but you can do that. I like that. Yes, you can do that. Um, so that feeds off of there. And then you're also going to have team requests. This um, list. Uh, oops. I need water. Hang on. Sorry. Let me just stop doing that. So you're going to have um, this list that's going to store the request. So anytime a user goes and requests a team, that request is going to get put into this list. Oh, wow. I was thirsty. OK. So that gets put into this list. And so you see I have some different requests here. And during the, let's go back to the app. So let's say I decide, or even I can just do a blank. So if I want to do a blank, I'll go ahead and discard request and go from scratch. If I go from scratch right now, I have private and public. Um, you could modify this. This is, you know, this was created before shared channels and all that other stuff, right? Yes. Um, and, and on here, you're not doing the global org wide team because that's also based on permission. But here I can do private or public. And so I can say, OK, I want to go private, and I'll click Next. Now, here's another thing. Oh, it's not letting me zoom. Um, my hands are wet. Um, but first things first here, well, right now I don't have any naming convention, but maybe you want to update the app so that you're enforcing some type of naming convention. Okay, This is just the way I have this out of the box. But I can do a, a search for, um, let's just see. So maybe I want to do a search for Comptv Next. I'm going to click on check availability, and what's going to kick off is a flow. So I have a flow here called check team availability that's going to be, that's triggered when they click that button. And so what this flow does, let's go into that flow. This flow just ran. Come on. So what this flow is going to do, it's going to run and it's going to check some things to see, basically checks to see if this team, ex if the name exists, right? Is there already a group or a SharePoint site? things like that, and then it responds to the Power App with the result. And if I were to put in a, um, something that wasn't available, I can't remember what all the names are already used, then I would, it would tell me the team name is taken. So you have that nice check there, and you can modify it. I also put in a description. I'll just put, you know, test, test. Not very creative right now. I'll click Next, and then this is the other thing I like about the app. One of the challenges within organizations is that they have a team created with one owner, and then that owner leaves. And then you have no one else that has been assigned. Best practice is to have at least a minimum of two owners. So one of the things I really like about this is that you're enforcing this already here on this request. Um, now, I, you know, we're not assuming I could have this auto-populating with the person that's making the request. Right now, I'm having them put it in, because maybe, you know, maybe they're not. But those are enhancements that you can do. So let me do a search for myself. Okay, so I got myself and any Marvel fans. I got Tony Stark as one of my users. And then I can also decide to add members. Um, and I guess right now, I don't know if it's because of the Logic app, but it's meant, I haven't, I gotta dive into that. But right now it's up to two members. But typically what I'll do is have it to where, even within core, I'll just put in the request for the team then after the team gets approved and created, then I go add my members that I want into that team. Okay. But you can customize this. I'll go ahead and click Next. 
And when I click next, now the user, the requester is going to get um, a screen here to confirm that this is what they want, or they can go back and make changes, and then they can submit it. So now what's going to happen when I submit this, um, I can see now, now I'm an admin, so I'm going to see some other requests here, or these are the ones, here's some that I did but didn't submit or drafted. Uh, but you can see here, I can see the submitted, I can see the statuses of things. Oh, these are my requests. And then if I go to approved requests, um, here I can see things here as well to see the details. Come on, wait. And this is all stuff you can customize. Like I said, this is built, uh, this is the out of the box, uh, what is built here. So what's going to happen is you saw that I requested a team called ComDB Next. Let me go back to the SharePoint less. Look at that. There's my new request. My new request has been populated into the SharePoint list. And so what happened then behind the scenes, these, I have another flow that kicked off. And it's the team request approval. So now this is going through an approval process. And I'm so glad to see that it's running and hasn't failed. But what's going to happen now, it's going to go through the approval process. And what it will do, it's I've got these variables that go through settings, um, update. There's some area here where I check get settings. I mean, there's, this is when I like being on my Surface Hub, actually, because then I can expand the whole thing. But what it's going to do is going to go through an approval process. And I am an approver. So what I should be able to see is there is, I probably turned off my notifications. I did. OK. So there's this requested teams, a requested team admins team. And this, be, you know, you can modify this the way you want. But this is where the adoptive card is being sent to the approvers. So now what you'll see is I have my adoptive card here, so I can approve this request, approve or reject. And so if I approve, um, I'll just go ahead and approve this. If I approve it, I can put comments or not and submit it. So what's going to happen is my flow is going to continue to run. And it went through the process. So now it's checking to see if there was a posting in Teams. And then it went through and it posted an adaptive card. So it posted a response. So it, it was waiting for a response to this adaptive card. So it asked for the approval. As soon as I approved it, it continued to run the flow. And then it updated the adaptive card in Teams here with the response. Now, this is the canned response that's built into this flow. But you can modify that to be whatever you want it to be as well. So this all, I, I love this solution. OK, so the response has been submitted. And if I go back to the SharePoint list here, I should be able to see, let me refresh just in case. Now I can see that it's been approved. So this has been approved. Now the next thing I have is a logic app. I have a logic app here called Process Team Request. And I'm not going to run it because, one, I'm having some issues. So it's going to fail. I've got to fix it. Um, but I'll just go in to, to show you the actual logic app in the designer. OK. So this is the logic app. I did not modify this logic app. The only thing I did change and that I had to change was my connection. So I changed the connection to, I updated the SharePoint site that I'm pulling um, and the list that I'm pulling these requests from. Now, and you put, you set how much, you know, how do, often do you want this run? Maybe you want it to run every hour, every minute, right? Every 30 minutes, something like that. You can change that. Now, this is my developer tenant. I don't demo this all the time, so I kind of I have it set to a month. Cause, and then I'll go and change it or run it if I wanted to. Um, then I have, it's going to update the status. So these are the things you have to change, um, the, the address, and uh, URL, and so on. But you'll go through. And what this does is this will go through. And when I run it, my connections are broke, so that's what I have to fix. But when this goes through it, what it's going to do is check to see, OK, did they Go through all the approved requests and find the ones that have not yet been provisioned. And the way I'll know is there is um, team creation. Okay, there's different statuses. Like in this one, I could see that my team creation failed. Well, maybe I need to go back and look and see why did that fail. Uh, but I've got different statuses on here. And so what will happen is it will go through, find anything that has been approved but that hasn't been created yet, and it will auto-provision the team. And then when the team gets created, I do have a couple here. Let's uh, just run with one of them. Oops, go back to Teamy. So let's go to this one. Nope. 
Okay. Um, now, my bad. I have a service account that happens to have my name too. I got to change that, and this kind of kind of messes up my demos. But really, this would be posted from your service account. So we'll say that there. Um, and so if I look here, this I can see that a team's been created. Now, the requester would actually get an email once the team's been provisioned, letting them know that their team has been created and so on. Now, let me show you how we do it at core. So at core, we have a requested team app. Now, I don't have permissions right now um, to this app, so I can't show you the behind the scenes part of it. But what I can show you is what we do. Now, there's something, they got to fix my permission. So and there's a little glitch in our app because I'm, I need to help the, my team with that. This was created before I joined Core. But that shouldn't be doing that. And it's going based on permission. So there's something not right. There's something that needs to be fixed in the logic. I think that wherever, um, I don't think there's something being done on the app start. It's maybe being done later. So it, it's a quick you know, flash and realizes, wait, I'm not in that group. So it hides it. Right. So I'd want to update that. But what we have here is we've customized it so that here I can, we are allowed to request teams for our clients and projects. So we create one team. Um, we're a consultant. Core BTS, I should tell you who we are. Core BTS is a Microsoft consulting partner. We're strategic Microsoft and Cisco partner. And so what we do is we, we actually we use Salesforce. We have, um, so we're doing integration with Salesforce. So not everybody has access to Salesforce. Um, but what we're doing is we're doing a feed here where any of our sellers, anytime we have new opportunities, it gets put into Salesforce. And then um, what we'll do is go and create a client project, or no, a client um, team. And in there, we'll put channels for the different opportunities. And then once we actually get a statement of work, and start on a project, we'll actually create, a, create an actual project team to work on. So what happens here, this has been customized. So if I click on Start, what I'm going to have is you'll see our interface has been modified here. So a couple of things. What I can do here is choose from a client. And what this is doing is it's pulling all the clients that we have in Salesforce. So that way I can choose, OK, who's my client? Um, let's say Green Bay Packaging is one of them. So I'll do a ser search for Green Bay Packaging. So I can do a search for Green Bay Packaging. And this app has been modified that it detected that it knows there's already a client team for this client. So it gives me the option now to open the client team. But if I didn't have a team created, then it would give me a button there so I can actually request to create a team. Um, so you see I've got the client team. But then also, the bottom here is the different projects. And so what here, well, we got a lot of projects on this one. Hold on, I'm looking for my mouse. Here we go. So here I've got a lot of projects. So I can click on these and say, OK, we actually have a ShareGate project. We're, gonna, we're doing some migration for them. So here we don't actually have a project created for this, or project team, so I might want to request to have that created. So I can do that. So the great thing about this is that you can customize this to fit your needs. Any questions? What do you think of this app? The data on the documentation, and I, I have to dive into that. So, yep. Yep. Yeah, so you can, I don't know if you guys can hear back there. So, one of the, and I'm real big on implementing sensitivity labels and doing things, right? So, one of the challenges, well, I worked on the VDAS role last year, and it was really, good experience for me because I got to see how Microsoft is structured. I got to see how you know things are being used and so on. And sensitivity labels are huge. So for example, there'd be different sensitivity labels based upon the role. And so you'd have one for full-time employees only. So if I'm a VDAS, or I was a VDAS, but I wasn't a full-time employee. So if I wasn't, you know, I had to be added into one that had external NDA or something else, like, you know, FTE and vendors or something like that, right? And all the Policies were set up based upon that. Well, this is what we can modify in this app as well. So in the app, it can say maybe we have it where um, Green Bay packaging, we determined we know Green Bay has specific, like you said, different requirements. Um, so you can change that. Um, in the documentation here, let's go back to it. Let me see if I can find the team. 
So this is great. So my, they have, oh, look at here. Yes, I'm so excited. Okay, I obviously have to update my demo now with the latest because here, and I'm glad, I apologize, I didn't get to do it sooner before this session, but we all just learned something new today, right? We learned that this has now been implemented into the latest app, which is fantastic, or it's given you the steps to do it. So here I've got sensitivity so that you can change that. Now, for us at Core, what we could do, I might decide to have sensitivity labels set up, but then based on the client project, have some conditions that it knows and it's only going to output or force whatever that client is enforcing. So this is great because you can expand on this and extend it. So that's what you need right here, right? Um, so it's So that's another good question, yeah, requesting a new channel. Well, and that also depends because for us, we allow our members to create channels, okay? So that if that's where something you might decide where you might say, you know what, we don't want anybody except for the owners to create channels, so you want to add that piece. You may want to add that into your process. So those are things that you can do. What do you think? Yeah. So, yes, so what you would have to do is have your templates set up and then just add those templates into the SharePoint list that will be the display to give them the template choices. But what, that's what it'll do. It'll go off any of the custom, it'll, any of the custom templates that you have created. So that's what I would do. So you have your custom templates, have all the defined channels in that template. I, th I think this one is really, really, really good. All right, I've got 16 minutes left. So this is, to me, this is one of the, I think, most used, best use cases because this is a huge need right now. And especially because, of, you know, nobody, I never expected us to go through something where our entire world shut down. I think, you know, I had challenges with all of that, but I see that all this has also been a blessing in disguise because you saw it really forced companies to advance in technology. And I know there's still people have a long ways to go, but before COVID, a lot of people didn't know what Teams was. And now, was, oh, we use Teams, right? People get excited, the schools, all that stuff get excited. So, but now, you know, the challenge is now is you do have a lot of people that work from home. I work from home, and I've always worked from home before all of this, but um, I don't have an office close by. But, you know, now you've got people that are on their own personal computers right? Or it depends on what your org. That's something that wasn't, people couldn't prepare for. So it's like all of a sudden we have to allow, get and enable people to work, but what do we do? And then what kind of security breaches do you open up with that? So there's, yeah, all these different things. All right, so I showed you, getting back, any more questions on the request So I'm super excited though because now that I saw that, it gives me, I'm going to update my demo to uh, include that, that in there as well. But It does require it, yes. So in the app itself, um, it's built into the app. So if I were to go back in here and go to request a team, that's right. So, oh, come on. I just, whatever, I'm putting in the other thing here, just showing you the screen. So right here. In the app, it's built in to enforce them to put in two owners. It won't even allow them to proceed with the request if they don't put two owners. Okay. Now, one of the things we do it for is we'll have the service account be an owner, and then we'll the, make the request, who, and whoever else is identified in there as the owner. So that was another thing we did. Okay. Um, there's some couple other ones that I think are fun, and... You know, there's a lot of third-party apps that are available that are great. You might, you know, you already might be paying, uh, paying, paying for some, you know, products that you're using that most of them like um, uh, ADP, HR thing. They, there's an app for it, right? There's different things for incentive if you're on that. But here's an incentive app that is the custom one that's part of the app template. 
Now this one's kind of an older demo I have, but um, it's same thing. You're going to have SharePoint list that's going to be on the back end. So I'll have a SharePoint list. It's going to have three lists, incentives, rewards, and user incentives. And so there's, once again, you go through some instructions on that. It will actually, you know, have you go walk through the setup for it. And what you'll see is I'm, actually, I'm an admin here, so I actually see this. Now this is all controlled by who the user is logged in and what their permissions are. So I've got two screens there, and then I can approve or reject. Um, I can uh, adjust points, update activities, and update awards. So in this demo, I just have things like, you know, Grubhub, $15 gift card, Best Buy, and Uber Eats, right? You can add all the different things that you want, how much you want to provide for that reward, and then how many points. So, you know, one thing I can do is say, I have an activity here that I want to do, and I'll say attend, you know, Comms VMX. How many points? How about 2,500? Woohoo! And then I can set an end date. Well, the conference ends on the 17th, so I'll say, okay, um, I'll give, uh, you know, I'll give people to add their activity by Friday, and then I give it an incentive code. So you you would create some kind of code for that. So this I might just call it Comms V Next, you know, 20. Oh, I can't do numbers. So Comms V Next, um, and then I'll click Add, and I have it active. Come on. Oh, contain, must contain letters and numbers. Okay. Oh, there's apparently a max character too, I guess, on it. I haven't checked that. So, and it didn't give me a message, so you might want to modify that. But here you say I have an incentive code. I can go in here. I can, whoop, too hungry. Hang on. All right, I'm getting hungry. Operator error. All right, so there's my code. I'll click Add. So now I have a new incentive here. And um, so I've got a new incentive here, and let's just go in. I, I need to get set up my other profile, so let's go into Home. Well, pretend like I'm another user logged in, but I'm just going to go ahead and cache this in for myself. But what will happen is you might send out an email and say, okay, attend comms V next. If you attend comms V next, you're going to earn, you can earn these points, right? And then you give them the code in that email or the team message or whatever you want to do. And then I can say, oh, I attended comms V next. Great. I'm going to go ahead in here and submit. And then I get this congratulations. It's told me I completed this activity. And then what I can do here is see that how many points I have now to redeem. So what I can do is go back in the SharePoint list. Let's look in the back end of this and go to user incentives. So user incentives. Of course, users aren't going to see this list, right? But there you'll see, I submitted that I attended Comms V Next, I get 2,500 points. Um, and so here I can go and redeem them too. So I can view all my rewards. So here I can click, to, the user will be able to click to view all the rewards. Now obviously I only have three, but I'd want to add more. And then I can go and select. Now I only have one. Now what I could do is also modify the app so they can up the quantity, right? And then based upon that, it would deduct the points. So what you'll see now is as I'm clicking and unclicking, you're going to see it deduct or add or subtract from my total. Then I can go ahead and redeem. Then when I click redeem, they'll go through an approval process. There's a flow that's running on the back end. And then what will happen is, right, it will get sent off to whoever it needs to go to go ahead and distribute these gift cards that this person is redeeming. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah. 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 Presentations to internal team, that's a good one. So one of the things, actually, you know, you guys just made me realize I'm going to implement this in this thing for because now, 
I'll tell you our organizational challenges. Core BTS has been acquired, they acquired multiple companies, smaller companies that are all fantastic. They all had their own way and processes of doing things. And um, so what I'm trying, it's very siloed. And even in the technology, very siloed. So what I've done now, we've got a couple other MVPs at Core, and what I've been doing is building an internal tech community. And that's one of the things I recommend. And this is what I saw. I'm basically taking what I saw was successful with the partners that I worked with last year, running the Power Automate Partner Program, RPA Partner Program. I got to see how they did things and how they were successful. And in building an internal tech community was huge. Even from a user adoption standpoint, and then like from the, you know, we're in consulting. So I have a lot of people that are very technical. I want our consultants to learn about the latest and greatest and newest technologies. Right, and, and one of the things I've seen happen is that organizations, um, Accenture or Avanade, Augustate, maybe it's Avanade. What they did was is they started internal tech communities. They wanted to bring awareness to Power Automate RPA, and they started introducing that and doing brown lunch or brown, what do you call those brown bag sessions? Yeah, doing different sessions to introduce. So that could be something, right? To say, okay, whoever presents these to help drive this would get points, and then people that attend would get points. And what I saw, though, is that Cognizant now has their own RPA org, because that is, they had a lot of consultants that really, they went on MS Learn and started doing their training, and they really wanted to get into RPA, and they did, and now they, they, they are soaring. And there's, you know, different types of technology. I don't know what your business is, but I can see this here at Core because I'm trying to upskill our team and get them up to date with things. We have some very talented people, but, you know, I'm I'm driving RPA. You know, they're a lot they're newer to RPA and other stuff. And my goal is to drive that growth from our consultant standpoint, but also a growth from being able to expand to help our partners or help our clients. So I see this as a very very nice and power and, and powerful tool. Um, and then other apps, I know we've got a short period of time, but there's a couple other different Power Platform apps, too, that you might be of interest. Um, there's a building access demo. Um, at Core BTS, we have many different offices, just nothing close to here, but there's another app here where you can put in to say what your buildings are, and I don't have a lot in here, but you can customize it, right? But I'm putting what our buildings are and, and you know, who's going, who needs the building access and so on. And actually, let's go to visitor management. So there's also visitor management. And on this one, maybe this is the one I meant to click on. Yeah, like this hot desking app. So here's an example, and this you can customize. Now, I used to work for Canvas based in Kirkland. I can choose my location, the visitor, I can't zoom, oh, there we go. Contact number, organization, right, stuff like that. But you can touch, like doing a desk, or yeah, I want to reserve this space for this time and so on. So this is something that people are starting to deploy and adopt or, uh, and use within the org. Okay. So I'm hoping that I showed you some things and I hope that you benefited from seeing that you have the sensitivity labels. Um, here's some resources for you. One of them is for the developer program uh, to sign up for a developer tenant or anybody that wants to sign up for one. I've got a link here for the Teams app template so that you guys can see all the available templates and deploy those. And then for those of you that just want to dive into more of the capabilities from a developer standpoint, there's also that documentation there. But what I like that is even if you're not a developer, it's kind of nice to go look, because I even have business analysts and stuff, so I can see that some of this is way over my head, but this is helping me because I'm starting to understand what we can do. And that's why I like, I love evangelizing for app templates because I think there's very good use cases and it helps you guys implement things with one you're not having to. Yes, you've got some Azure consumption on some of this stuff, but it's all within the Microsoft stack. And it's things that you can expand on and build. Any other questions? There's my contact information once again. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. You can also find me on Twitter. Um, and uh, we're hiring if anyone's looking. And, uh, <laughs> and if uh, you're looking for help too, we can also help you there as well.
So I really appreciate you all attending. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, and um, have a great day.